Today at Speedy's Garage we're going to be installing a four dual pump fuel hat in Project Orange Crush. Mine's already loaded with two Walbro GSS 340 fuel pumps. Uh, they're 255 liter per hour units. And then I opted to go with the Arrington upgraded wiring harness to make sure the pumps get sufficient uh, voltage and amperage and to uh, take some of the load off my stock wiring. So there's what the wiring harness comes with. It's very complete. A buddy of mine actually puts these together for Arrington. They use nice weather pack connectors on everything. So I'd say that's probably better than OEM actually. The uh, power wires for the pumps and the ground wires are upgraded to 12 gauge. And then this is for the fuel level sender. This may be a little bit hard to show due to the confined space, but the first thing we want to do is pull the back seat out. Actually, the seat bottom, there's two metal tabs that go into rubber grommets on each side. You just pull up on them, and the whole back seat will just slide, slide out. The next thing you want to do is lay both seat backs down. There's little... Um, nylon pull tabs on each side so lay those down and then pull up your velcro strips and then we're going to remove these five 18 millimeter bolts so we can take the seat backs out and as you can see there's a pin right there by that bracket the two back seat upper halves are connected by that pin and the passenger seat will just slide off and then you can lift it off the bracket and then the back seat on the driver's side will just slide right out. Now that we have the seat completely out of the way I want to show you where the fuel pump actually lives. It's right underneath that little rubber grommet. So we'll, later on we'll pop that off and then there's a lock ring one that will take off and then the fuel pump with the basket will come right out. But that's where it is. It's behind your, uh, behind your driver's seat. It's pretty easy to get to. Next thing we want to do is empty the trunk. And then we're going to want to take out the trunk bottom. And it's just a you know, hard foam board uh, covered in carpet. And it will lift right out. Next, you're going to take the spare tire out. And you just loosen it. just lift up and the jack can stay in place. Okay next we want to disconnect the positive battery terminal. So we're just going to pop this little plastic cover off. There's a 10 millimeter bolt that holds that on. And we're also going to go ahead and remove the rear power distribution or fuse box cover. There's a little tab on there that'll lift that off. And then we're going to insulate the battery cable the uh, positive battery cable inside a rag so that it doesn't uh, touch this uh, positive post while working on the car. Okay, the next thing you want to do is lay the harness out and go ahead and route it through the car as if you were going to install it. This checks for length and you'll kind of know how you're going to route it before you start bolting everything in place and making any connections. So here are the two connectors that are going to go to the four fuel hat and then the factory wiring ran underneath this um, sound deadening material. It's like a thin foam. So it's really easy to just push the um, the fused end, the end with the ATC fuse holder on it, underneath this foam, and then come around and follow this ridge right along the top, and then have it turn and follow the factory wiring on the passenger side. Now right here is a bolt, um, or nut actually I should say, actually that is a bolt, that will not be used um, by the factory. 
So that's where the ground ring terminal goes. Now I've just placed it there temporarily to check for fitment, but what we're gonna do is sand around the base of that so that the um, ground gets a nice connection. Okay, so the next thing we wanna do is take our sanding wood dowel and our sandpaper and then sand on the mounting stud. That's gonna be where the um, relay and wire harness and everything grounds. So you wanna make sure to remove all the paint around that stud so that that connection, that, um, that uh, electrical eye gets a really good connection to the body. And that wood dowel has sandpaper on each end. One side is 60 grit, the other side is 100 grit. So what you wanna do is start off with the 60 grit to really bite that paint off of there. And then once you get it uh, pretty well sanded, switch over to the 100 grit side. And then when you come back and look at it, any areas around that stud that the paint remained, use the little piece that's included. There's a small piece of 100 grit and just use that to finish it off. And next you wanna thread on the 18 millimeter serrated nut that's included in the kit. And using a deep well socket, fit nice and tight. And the next thing you want to do is install your relay on the stud that's about three inches behind the fuel hat cover. Uh, all I did was lay it over that, and then the kit comes with a little um, uh, metal washer. I slid that down on top of the stud, and then uh, the kit came with a little plastic tab. Uh, yours may be different. I actually decided to use a nylon nut. I wasn't sure what thread that stud was, but nylon, uh, it allowed the thread to or the stud to just cut its own threads in the little nylon nut, and it secured in place. And then you want the four pin to come down and to the right. That's the four pin connector. It's going to go to the fuel hat. You want the two pin to go over the top, like that. And then the third branch here runs up underneath into the back of the car. With the relay mounted, I went ahead and routed the rest of the harness. Um, there's a tab right there in the middle of the trunk, a zip tied to that. And then anytime I run wiring, I always try to just follow the factory wires. I figured there's a reason they put them where they did. So here's my harness right here running alongside the factory wiring. And then I actually went through this plastic retainer. Um, it just pops up. Uh, there's tabs on each side. You can see them. It's pretty obvious how it opens. And then it'll slip off the top of these nuts. And then it'll open up and you can actually route your harness inside of that with the factory stuff. And then I just followed that black factory wiring harness all the way up to the fuse box. And then we'll take the little 10 millimeter nut off of there and uh, connect our harness right there alongside the red one. And this is what will give our fuel pumps power. Okay, and the next steps we're going to need to do some soldering. So go ahead and uh, plug up your soldering iron so it can be getting hot. Obviously this is the OEM wire bundle that uh, controls the fuel pump fuel system. So what we're going to need to do is unplug this connector off the top of the fuel hat. Here's the lock ring that holds the fuel hat down. We're going to remove that later. Right now, just push down that tab, unplug this connector. Now I've heard that there are some cars, some challengers, that have different wire colors on this connector. So uh, the functions will be the same, you know, because of the pinout on the end, but the wire color in your car might not necessarily be the same as in mine. So what you're going to want to do is make a note starting at the round end, call that pin one, two, three, four, five, and then note your wire colors. Like my pin one is blue and white, pin two is black. Pin 3 is blue and white, pin 4, orange and black, and pin 5, orange and blue. So I've noted that on a sheet of paper over here so that I can reference that later. And then what we're going to do is remove all this tape back underneath this foam. And we're going to remove the rubber grommet 
so that we can access these wires. We're going to need to cut this plug off and solder on the weather pack plug that goes to the four hat. Okay, so I've removed the rubber grommet, the fuel hat cap. I've cut the factory connector off. And don't panic about doing this. I mean, if you ever wanted to go back, all you do is strip off a little wire and solder this back on. I mean, it's not that big of a deal. Um, I gave myself about four and a half inches of wire on the end of that connector, just in case I ever needed to do that. I don't see that ever happening, but, you know, it's better be safe than sorry. So we're done with that. We end up with five wires. The pins one, two, and three are for the fuel level transmitter, in other words, your gas gauge. So I've bundled those together because those are going to go to one weather pack connector. There's the one for the uh, fuel gauge. And then we've got two wires that were power and ground to the pumps, or the pump, rather, that was in the car. Um, these will now activate the relay that we mounted earlier. It's under here. Those will now activate that relay and will cause the new four fuel hat pumps to draw power directly from the battery through that relay. And we'll connect those with the two pin connector here. Okay, I've installed the wire seals as well as the pins on the ends. All I need to do is put a dab of solder on each of those pins and then these wires are ready to be inserted into their appropriate uh, plastic connectors. Okay, these were pins four and five from the uh, five pin connector that was in the OEM fuel pump hat. You can see that A is connected to pin five and B is connected to pin four and this is going to be power and ground for the relay. And then you got your wire seal in there and there's what the pins look like inserted. And those pins are soldered on, like I said. Be sure to use proper soldering technique. You want to heat the wire and then touch the solder to the wire and let the heat draw the solder in. Don't touch the solder to the soldering gun and try to drip it on the wire because you'll end up with a cold soldering joint and that's no good. You want the, the wire to actually absorb the solder. But there's your connection. And then we'll just slide the, um, the blue lock and that connection is complete. So this is what a proper solder joint should look like. You'll notice it looks almost like the wire has actually absorbed the solder and it's fused to the pin. That's what you want to see. If you have bubbling or if it just looks like it's gooped on there, you need to uh, melt it off and redo it. One thing you want to remember is that there are two blue with white stripe wires uh, in regards to the, to the fuel level transmitter. So you want to make sure and mark the one that was in pin 3 with three marks identify it somehow, and the one with it, that was in pin 1 with one mark. You don't want to get those mixed up. Okay, so I've got the relay power and ground connected up. There's the fuel gauge transmitter that will connect to the top of the four hat. Uh, on this right here, you have a couple of options. You know, there's always more than one way to run wiring. You can cut the factory wire short so that this connector is farther back underneath the foam padding there. What I decided to do is just fold it end over end and tuck it inside some corrugated tubing. Um, I usually try to leave factory wiring as is anytime I mess with it so that in the future if I need to change anything or, or you know, move things around, I've still got all the original wiring. It's just bundled, as you can see, inside of the corrugated uh, cover there. And then I'll just tuck all this in under the uh, armrest and that will be hidden and then we'll move on to the fuel hat. 